Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Bloomberg Engineering Manager, Systems Core Engineering, John Ballone. Wow, what an entrance. Yesterday with the, the lasers and the smoke and the music, I feel like I'm a wrestler. <laughs> but I'm not. Um, I'm an engineering manager of Systems Core Engineering. My team is responsible for automation, engineering, infrastructure, for configuration management, and orchestration. We're going to talk a little bit today about our road to Salt Stack and how we've implemented in the last nine months. Before that, I'd like to quickly talk about Bloomberg and our product. So the Bloomberg Terminal, for those of you that are not familiar, is our core product. It's used by hundreds of thousands of traders, hedge fund managers, pension fund managers around the world daily. We use it to deliver financial software data information, along with delivering over the television, the radio, and the internet. The terminal is so influential that if it's down, countries won't issue treasury bonds. They'll actually wait. So high availability, speed, and efficiency mean you know, are big for us. Let's talk a little bit about the engineering culture so you get an idea of what we're working with uh, when we introduce SaltStack into the firm. We have over 25% of our global employees are engineering department. That's over 5,000 engineers worldwide. As I said, efficiency and high availability are our namesake. And business, the product, and engineering value time to market extremely high, both with the infrastructure and the applications. We have engineers dispersed worldwide, New York, Tokyo, London, San Francisco, and Hong Kong. Let's do a quick technology cross-section, because this was a big part of the reason why we chose SaltStack. We're primarily bare metal and cloud infrastructure, private cloud infrastructure, OpenStack and VMware. Our operating system cross-section is AIX. I know you heard about that a little earlier. Red Hat Linux, Ubuntu Linux. Solaris and Windows. With the platforms that we have, we have three different CPU architectures, and we have an eclectic compute environment. That is VMs, x86 VMs, Linux containers running Docker, Kubernetes, most of you are familiar with, Solaris nodes, and AX heavy parts. So let's talk a little bit about how we chose SaltStack, because for us, we actually didn't immediately choose the product, we actually put it in a, in a ring with a bunch of other products with our practitioners. We defined the problem, which we'll talk about in a second. We created an internal working group to solve a small task and give feedback so that we were able to make a choice with senior leadership. So the reason we chose SaltStack is that it fit all of our problems. Uh, we needed to find a product for orchestration, specifically job execution and complex workloads. Uh, we use configuration management, we use Chef for that purpose, and we needed to find a tool that fit the same general DevOps principles and infrastructure as code. We wanted our engineers who were familiar with using GitHub for pull requests, submitting um, reviews to people, uh, doing a regular release cadence, to have the same tooling and processes that they did with their other uh, config management solutions and services that they were running. We needed something that supported our security and network requirements, which will be something that we talk about in a few seconds as well. And we wanted future support for network automation, for firewalls, load balancers, and switches. So as I said, we assembled a working group. We called it a new team, right? Uh, these are practitioners that were already using similar products or SaltStack it's itself in various degrees, and we gave them a task. We asked them to solve a OS upgrade workflow problem with Linux, because that was something we actively needed to automate. We gave them a few weeks, they came back with both products that we were looking at, Ansible, and they both solved the problem. But we looked at the differences on the sheets between the two, and we provided eventually the feedback and the steering to senior leadership that SaltStack was the right solution. 
So we chose SaltStack for a lot of reasons. Obviously, it supports all of the operating systems that I just talked about. It supports the platforms and CPU architectures. But most importantly, it gives us the ability to do event-based automation, reaction-based. And you'll see that in a little while too. It supports the complex workflows that we need, orchestration. It does support our network security requirements. We'll talk about that in a second again. But again, for engineering, it supports a language that our engineers are already familiar with, Python. The processes were the same as it would be with uh, any other Python-based language services. Uh, and most importantly, very quickly to pick up and easily extendable to integrate with some of our enterprise uh, CMDB data services that we already needed to build clusters. Oh yeah, awesome community. So when I talked about a network and security requirements uh, for SaltStack and any, or, or any product that we would chose, as a lot of companies that are worldwide, they have hundreds of points of presence throughout the world and we're no different. Uh, the difference here, though, is most people are familiar with connecting a minion directly to a master. That's, that's how you see uh, most deployments from SaltStack. We put a syndic in place because we needed the ability to have the control plane uh, narrowed down to a specific set of hosts for the firewall and Apple tools. The master itself runs inside of an administrative network that's globally accessible only from the syndics themselves. And the syndics act as they would through as a pass through uh, syndic master. Uh, and all the minions connect to that. And therefore, the syndic itself acts as a bestie host into uh, the said network segment or uh, the subnet. So, as you can imagine, the first problem we decided to solve after we got the infrastructure up and running was systems provisioning, right? Because we had already, we thought it was easy, we already solved that basic problem. Well, it wasn't that easy. So we define systems provisioning as many other large organizations do that manage their own data centers as uh, the point that the, the server gets racked and cabled inside of the data center and powered up. We need to install the latest version of the operating system for the target host. Generally, that's Linux. Sometimes it's Windows, AX, like I said, I was talking about. Uh, and we need to boot into the OS and do a process that we call saltify. Then we run Chef for configuration management. And then we run a process called post installation tasks. And we've listed a few out here. The top one uh, being accepting the minion key. And we've done that with a reactor, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, but something like upgrading firmware. That requires a system reboot, and we ended up writing an execution module for that. And if necessary, depending on the type of cluster, we might need to mount NFS file systems. So, part of what I talked about earlier is SaltStack is easy to extend, and we have existing data services that provide uh, uh, structured data in JSON or gRPC format uh, that we needed to inject into uh, the states. Uh, we built a custom module to provide that data, uh, use an existing service, and it's actually really easy for us to set up. This data provides logical information about a cluster, uh, such as which environment it's in, uh, either physical network environment if it's separate, or logical environment if it's QA, but in production. Uh, the cluster information itself, who owns that cluster? What's the schedule that it needs to do nightly maintenance? Uh, where is it geographically located? And of course, the application type. What's the role of the hosts that are in there? And these are all things that you would imagine are necessary to do any type of orchestration. So power management. We needed a way to abstract some of the power management features uh, of all the platforms that we, we require so that we can do things like firmware upgrades or even uh, OS upgrades and kernel patches. The power module supports hard and soft power offs uh, for all of the x86 platforms that we currently maintain from the different vendors over the ILO IPMI interface. It does have private cloud support uh, using SaltStack so that we're able to abstract away which hosts we're actually uh, running the orchestration task against so that we can reboot or restart uh, a host in VMware or OpenStack. So the first reactor that we really uh, wrote was one called Salt Key Acceptance. I'm sure there's a nifty code name that I don't know about, but the point behind this reactor is that we did not want to have an engineer manually having to go on and accept the keys for new hosts that come online. Uh, and we decided very early on that we want, the, we want the process itself to be automated, but we don't want to just blindly accept keys because that's obviously a security risk. So we wrote a reactor that listens to an event 
uh, on, the, on the event bus. Uh, that's the pending minion key event. And the reactor itself captures the event, context back to our provisioning HTTP API. And the API itself says, yeah, that's a host that should be rekeying itself, or that's a host that uh, should be accepted into uh, the salt minion, salt master, sorry. Uh, and the provisioning API itself calls back and then accepts the minion key. This allows us to have a secure uh, loop where we, if we have a rogue minion, we're able to do an alarm and say, hey, by the way, that thing actually uh, isn't in the provisioning list and you probably shouldn't put it into that regu regulated cluster. Not a good idea. But more, most importantly, it's one less thing that an engineer, an automation engineer has to do manually. So how many people here have a concept uh, of nightly maintenance? You have an application, you have to do something nightly. Well, one person, that's awesome. That means you've gone a lot further than we have in automation. So nightly maintenance generally, is, that we consider nightly maintenance as uh, doing things like log rotation. Some, that should be log rotate D, but in some cases you can't use log rotate D. Uh, things like software deployment and things like uh, moving data files around. Maybe there's a, a local database or a cache or something that you need to move in that it's pre-populated before it gets there. We need to, before we do any of this nightly maintenance though, we need to drain customer traffic. And this is another execution module that we wrote. It uses uh, custom APIs with our own um, RPC bus that actually drains the traffic, puts the host into maintenance mode and allows us to continue on and do the nightly maintenance. Of course, we restart core services applications, maybe even do a reboot if there's a firmware or a kernel patch. But one thing we ran into with Salt uh, is cluster scheduling. A basic cron scheduler actually works for the majority of use cases that we needed. Uh, but there were a few that, that didn't actually work and we needed something more advanced and we worked with SaltStack over the last 10 months and, uh, to develop an advanced scheduler that we're gonna use in Salt Enterprise. But to give you an example of what we're actually talking about, it's around the business logic of what a cluster itself does. Um, for example, what's the cardinality of the host that needs to be offline before the application itself is down? You don't want to take that last host down and have no availability because you don't have any headroom for your application. So these types of things are baked in some cases to our schedules instead of the CMDB. So let's talk a little bit about cron scheduling. I'm sure everyone has written this one once every hour. In fact, most people write it because there's actually a platform-specific tag called hourly. Pretty simple. Hourly itself, though, can be uh, maybe not in the zero minute, maybe it's on the one minute, it depends on the platform, and you can change that. Simple, worked with SaltStack out of the box. At 6.47 on Sunday, okay, oddly specific. This is actually the default for Ubuntu for the weekly uh, shortcut, again. Very simple, works with, in fact, there's a, the cron you can use. At midnight, Monday through Friday. All right, so here's close to what we're using for nightly. This seems right. Let's schedule a job for midnight, Monday through Friday. That works. We can do that with the scheduler, no problem. Perhaps you restart a service, perhaps you have to log rotate. Simple. The 20th minute from zero through 59. Okay, so anyone who's used pull-based configuration management systems, we use Chef. Uh, very similar to this, you need to converge on a cycle. And you always want to converge uh, multiple times an hour to ensure that there's no drift. Okay. So this one's a little bit more complex because it has the zero slash 20 notation and yeah, okay. But it works on every platform. Eh, a little, little difficult on Windows, but it does work. What about this one? Hmm. Which market? London, Chicago? Oh. Is it time zone based? Is it which time zone the host is in? Right, does it run on bank holidays? London bank holidays, yeah. This is more important for ad hoc tasks, right? So uh, as an engineer, if they need to do something on the machine ad hoc and we don't wanna give them root or elevated privileges, we need them to do an orchestration task or you know, job execution. Anytime today, whew, dangerous. That's the priority of a job, right? Let's not quite run this now it's not urgent, but anytime today, no worries. <laughs> Over the weekend, that's closer to the weekend notation that we saw, but there's an interesting uh, problem here. If you have a bunch of over the weekend scheduled jobs, you get into a situation where you have a thundering herd. 
either on the Salt Master itself, maybe on the services that you actually are supporting. Um, you could add in a splay, you know, the and and sleep hack that everyone uses. But, ah, is that possible? Yeah, it's actually possible. <laughs> if the schedule is, on, uh, the first of the month is a Saturday or a Sunday, that's possible. Uh, I'm sure someone here could actually write a cron notation to actually do that. I wouldn't want to see it, and I definitely wouldn't want to put it in production. <laughs> so let's talk about our 2018 roadmap real quick. As I, as I mentioned, we're, we're implementing uh, Salt Enterprise, uh, specifically uh, for the advanced schedule of features. We're well along the way for automating our infrastructure, um, we, but we have a lot to go, uh, a lot more, based on what I've seen here. No one seems to do any nightly maintenance. That's awesome. We want to update our existing experiences that, with Salt Stack, and that's why we chose to use Salt Enterprise. So the main thing for us here is the advanced schedule capabilities. But additionally, for us, the ability to give uh, the control uh, to either operators, application engineers to do actions on their cluster without us needing to actually uh, get involved is huge. LDAP integration, RBAC control. We want to give the same people, including ourselves, visibility and insight into what's happening on the infrastructure so they actually know when things fail or if a worker flow or task is not you know, going crazy. Of course, the future support for the advanced schedule is great. I said that three times, right? <laughs> Automated testing, and I saw this a little earlier. This is huge for us because our current uh, development workflow and our current workflow for our uh, automated testing for Chef uh, uses Test Kitchen heavily, and there's already support for Test Kitchen with Kitchen Salt, and that's awesome. Uh, we're looking to work with both the Test Kitchen and the Salt community to further the multi-node support of Test Kitchen that allow us to test orchestration tasks inside of Jenkins, uh, inside of uh, a virtual machine, or even Docker, so that we can validate that what's actually happening uh, before we put it into production. And we don't have to run a whole set of uh, uh, canary infrastructure. We need to have dedicated hosts for our test infrastructure. For anything that we need to do with uh, vendor specific, we obviously want a dedicated host to actually do that. And we need to expand our lab. Of course, we want to continue to support the open source efforts for everything. But what we're really interested in is the compliance and remediation. So we don't want to be the next uh, big company that uh, gets uh, hit with a security vulnerability and leaks a bunch of data. Our clients wouldn't like that. So we started, use, we started looking at SaltStack Enterprise for the integration with compliance uh, around the open source product. Uh, but we really want the ability to give some of our security professionals inside the company the ability to run those audits and to test those audits. Uh, and uh, everything goes green across all of our infrastructure, no matter where it is in the world or what flavor of OS, a single place. We want CV analysis, Windows firewall policies, GPO would be great, package versions, so thank you, everyone. Uh, I look forward to uh, talking to everyone over the next few days. Please enjoy the conference. <laughs>